welcome to my channel. If you've never been here before, thanks for stopping by. If you're a returning subscriber, I appreciate you too. In today's video, we're gonna be doing the long awaited and much requested ultrasound tech Q&A video. So the delay came just for me trying to wait on you guys to ask different questions, but I just figured I'd just come up with some on my own. So if you see me looking down, I have all my questions written down and I've tried to group them into categories. So we're gonna to try to get through this pretty quickly. I don't wanna hold you guys. First question. How did I get into the healthcare field? So I always kind of knew that I wanted to be in healthcare, but I also knew that I didn't want to be like a nurse. I didn't necessarily want to do any needle sticks. I didn't necessarily want to do any like cleaning of the patient, like, you know, dealing with restroom duties and things like that. I knew that I didn't want to be that personal, but I did know that I wanted to be in the healthcare field. So my search kind of started in high school when I kind of realized that, um, I needed to find an avenue for what I wanted to do. So imaging was the first thing that I came across. I am actually a x-ray tech before I became a ultrasound tech. And the way I found that was through an allied health program. So at my school, my high school, they had like an opportunity for me to go through this program that allowed you to see different types of healthcare um, modalities. So that's how I found x-ray. And through x-ray, I found ultrasound. So that was my pathway. So I've had questions of people asking like, can you be an x-ray tech first? And yes, you don't have to be an x-ray tech to get to ultrasound, but that was the route that I took. How long was my program? So my ultrasound program was 18 months, but like I just said, my program was 18 months because I had the x-ray bachelor's degree prior to the program. So the particular program that I chose requires you to have a radiologic techno technologist degree. So I had to have that before I could even get into this particular program. There are several programs, depending on your state, that you can go straight into ultrasound. There's schools here where I could have just done a four year in ultrasound or there's I could have went away and done like a two year program. But I wanted my bachelor's, so that's why I went the route that I went. How long did it take in total to become an ultrasound tech? So like I said, for me, it took me six years since I went the tech, since I went the route of doing x-ray first. It does not have to take that long. You can find other programs. I have friends. Um, I would say the ultrasound tech program on its own takes anywhere from 18 to two years, 18 months to two years. So I have friends that have done the two year option and my, I myself have done the 18 month option works really well for me i will say any of the 18 month courses are going to be expedited so expect it to be a very 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 heavy workload like you're going to have a lot of quizzes a lot of tests um expect to not have as much time to get the scanning down because the the program is shortened so yeah the program that i went to they taught me vascular and general at the same time in 18 months so the other program that i was telling y'all the two-year program the ones that I know of it's usually like you learn general the first year and then the second year you learn vascular or vice versa just depending and then in general how was school for me so school for me was pretty challenging I felt like I had a really hard time picking up the scanning so I do want to tell you guys like if you're in school and you're struggling with the scanning just keep doing it like that is the only way to get better at scanning is to actually do it I know that it's nerve-wracking to be practicing on a patient not even practicing but to be scanning a patient is nerve-wracking as a brand new student or even like deep into the program I felt like um for me personally I was one of the ones who I had to really put the work in to get the scans other people it just came naturally they just got it they didn't have to do a ton of studying it was not that way for me book work wise and also scanning I struggled through school and this was different for me because I had never really had to study prior to this things had always just came pretty easily to me like I would read them a couple times and I pretty much had it not with this <laughs> so if you're going into an ultrasound program just really you need to set aside a couple of really I would say like 30 45 minutes per day just to kind of go over material so that way it's fresh in your brain 
that is how I had the most success. I realized when I was trying to binge study or trying to study more than one subject at one time, it just wasn't sticking into my head. So I changed things up towards the end of my program and it worked out for me. Um, I would say just give yourself small goals and achieve it that way. That's how I would do it. That's how I have done it. Things I didn't know before I started the program. Um, one of the main things I would say that I did not know before I started the program was the amount of skins that I had to do per day. I wasn't really sure what to expect with that. Um, so typically I do about 12 skins per day working in the hospital. I know for some people that spread way out, I've worked facilities where I do maybe eight per day and I prefer kind of being a little bit busier. It's nice to kind of have downtime, but at the same time, when I was only scanning that many people, you would have your days kind of seem longer in my opinion. Some people like the chill pace of that, but not necessarily my favorite. And then also another thing I would say that I did not know was just the wide variety of things that will be included in general ultrasound. And then also the amount of knowledge that you have to have to actually do ultrasounds. I just, when I did my shadowing, I seen it, but I didn't realize it was gonna be as in depth as it is. Just meaning the amount of memorization that you need to have and yeah, just mu muscle memory is one of the biggest things with ultrasound. That's why I said you just have to scan to get used to it. So after you do things a certain amount of times, you start to get used to it and your hands kind of start to, like you'll just automatically know how to do things that took you in the beginning of your program, maybe an hour to get, is gonna start to take you 25 minutes, 30 minutes. So, but also don't rush. Make sure that you're being a thorough tech and realize that these people that are trusting you with their skin, like, you know they're depending on you to find pathology if there is any so keep that in mind like this isn't a job that you should get just get into because you're trying to make a quick buck like yes it pays well but also realize that these are real people and these are real patients and you will want somebody to take your skin seriously so just do the same for your patients the next question is my personal work settings so i slightly kind of breezed over this i work in a hospital setting there are clinics, there are private practices, you can work in OB clinics, you can work, um, it's just so many different types of places that you can work in. So for me, I work in the hospital. I enjoy the hospital because like I said, it's a little bit faster pace. Um, there are obviously pros and cons of working in the hospital. In my area, I would say the biggest con would be the weather. So when you work in the hospital, there is no you have like you have to make it if it's snowing and it's a whole bunch of snow outside you still have to try to get to work i mean the people are people are not going to stop getting sick because you can't make it so that's the difficult part if you work for like a private practice or a clinic per se there's a higher chance that they may call you off of work because the, the patients nine times out of ten aren't going to show up but there's a little bit different when these aren't scheduled patients being in the hospital um, and then the pro of the hospital, once again, the pace. And then I also felt like being a new grad, working in the hospital, you have plenty of people to bounce questions off of. So if you're unsure about something, you can easily find a coworker. There's usually at least one other person working with you. In my facility, I usually have two people work with me until I go into the later end of my shift. And then it's usually just me and one other person. But you might not have that luxury as a clinic worker, or somebody working in a physician's office. You may be the only tech there. So I felt like those positions are more suited for a season tech. I'm still in my first year post-graduation. So yeah, I just feel like maybe later on down the line, but for now, no. Next question is days or nights. For me, I would say days. Nights are good because you're going to get that differential pay. So typically you get a couple more dollars for working the night shift. But just for me personally, I value having the space and opportunity to do things throughout the day after my shift if I want to. So I kind of work a later shift now, 9.30 to 10. I can't really do that. But if I want to get things done in, earlier in the morning, I can. Um, I haven't in a long time, but let's say like I want to work out or something like that. You can go to the grocery store. Whatever you want to do, you can get it done prior to your shift without it being like, you know, just like you rushing to get to work. So for me, I would say days, but I know a lot of people who prefer nights. Also, the pace is way different on nights. So you're not going to have 
really as many procedures you're not going to have as much riffraff it's honestly just going to be er patients and then maybe a couple of inpatients throughout the night whereas throughout the day you're going to be having them er patients flowing in depending on your facility different specialties offered in ultrasound so there is you can be an ob sonographer you can do it you can be a general sonographer you can do vascular you can do neurosonography you can do pediatric sonography you can do what's called msk that's where you focus on the muscles um there are so many different small little subcategories in ultrasound which is another reason why I love the field because I feel like you can do so much with it. So for me, I chose general and I chose general because of the broad range of things. And I felt like since I learned that in school, it was really important to me to hone in on those skills. Like I felt like since it was so fresh, I needed to stick with it and make sure that I really had a firm understanding of those basics before I tried to move on to something else. So I have my vascular and my general. Vascular is more so um, covering just the blood flow throughout the body, circulation, um, your arteries, your veins, your you know carotid arteries, um, liver dopplers. That's where you literally listen to blood flow throughout the liver and make sure that everything's okay with that. You look for signs of blockages, um, occlusions, um, stenosis is that's when the vessel is smaller than what it should be blood clots like all that stuff is considered vascular so that is what i do a lot of i feel like that is one of the most ordered tests for me at the hospital is venous dopplers that's where we check the veins of your legs to see if there's any sign of blood clots and that was another thing for me like the different the vast the variety of exams like you're going to be literally scanning everything from pelvic exams all the way to breasts all the way to abdominal scans like le like I said legs arms you're going to be scanning everything so just be aware of that it's not just babies and you know belly scans like it's it's way more than that um unless you choose that you can then which additional registries do I plan to get? So I am sitting for my abdominal board coming up very, very, very soon in the next couple months. So um, that will give me three registries. And then after that, I plan to get my OB registry and I'm still undecided on peds. I know that I wanna do my breast board, but other than that, I haven't decided on peds. I may go ahead and get it just cause I feel like it's easier to do sooner rather than later um but yeah we'll see finding a job after school so for me i got pretty lucky i actually found a job during school but i'm not trying to make it seem like it was an easy journey i had went on many interviews and got turned down from many of them mainly being for experience so people felt like because you because you're a new sonographer and that's kind of with any job they want you to have a ton of experience which i did not have and I graduated in 2020, so yeah, it was like right at the hype of COVID when I was nearing the end of looking for a job. So everybody was already short staffed, so they're wanting really strong staff that know exactly what's going on, you know, and I, I couldn't offer that. I knew a lot, but there were some times where I'm like, you know, I might need some help with some things, but Either way, it ended up working out for me. I found a hospital that was a little bit further out than I would have liked. It was about 35 minutes away from me. And then I ended up looking up and finding something for a higher pay and much closer to me. Um, so yeah, I ended up taking that position maybe like six months into my first job, which I have never left a job that early. And I actually really loved that job. But at the same time, there were things that I didn't like about it. There was a ton of call. And it, like I said, that job was really far. And especially, like I said, in the winter time here, you do not want to be driving 35 minutes. So yeah, I took a job way closer to me, higher pay, just the risks outweighed you know, I mean, the, the benefits outweigh the, the risk. The benefits outweigh the risk. So I ended up taking that position. And I have been really happy with the switch so far. Next question is work-related injuries. So work-related injuries. This is a big one. In my program, they did a really good job kind of expressing 
the dangers of work-related injuries, the most common just being multi musculoskeletal ish injuries. So you get those from just doing like repetitive motions and that is what ultrasound is, but doing those repetitive motions with bad ergonomics. So not having your arm at a 90 degree angle, um, bending over awkwardly, standing in, in just strange positions, which you do tend to do, but you need to try to minimize that as much as possible. And then also preventative care. So I do tons of massages, y'all. Like I'm talking about, I try to go once a month. If you guys watch my weekly vlogs, then you know that I do a lot of that. It's very important. So anytime I'm going to go get that massage, I'm doing it to prevent. And then sometimes I do have a little bit of pain, but I haven't experienced anything like what I've heard other people experiencing. Like some people need to get tendons repaired and things like that. But for the most part, I try to be ergonomically correct. So when you're going into that room, take the two seconds to raise the patient's bed up. I know that it's, it may be a little bit of a hassle, but just go ahead and do it. Like it's, it takes two seconds. Just do it and it'll save your back, it'll save your wrist, it'll save your body long term. And you'll have a nice, long, healthy career. You don't want to be broken down from work. Like that's not why you're working. You're not working to be broken down. So take care of yourself while you're taking care of your patients. It has to be balanced next question favorite thing about being an ultrasound tech okay so my favorite thing about being an ultrasound tech would have to be the impact on my patients i really do pride myself with trying to give people the care that i will want to receive and that's with anybody even if i feel like a patient is kind of being rude or nasty to me i have a hard time giving that energy back to patients because I know that you don't feel well you know you're here because you don't feel well and that may be hard for a lot of people and it's hard for me sometimes too if somebody's just blatantly being rude then that's a different story but even then I don't necessarily stoop down to their level because once again you're you're not feeling well so that's why you're in the hospital but yeah I just I love the genuine interactions and the bonds that I build with my patients, although it is a very short amount of time, I'm probably with the patient 30 minutes, 45 minutes max. <laughs> so it's not like I get to see these people very long. But what I do, I feel like I have made a little bit of an impact. So that's my favorite part about it. And then also just, I have lucked up to be at a place where I really enjoy the people that I work with. So it's another thing. And then also, Hmm, what is my other favorite thing about working in ultrasound? The knowledge. I would say the knowledge. Just knowing things um, about the body and how they work is also a, a pro. I feel like that's something that takes you kind of anywhere you want to go. I have friends now that are going into PA school from doing ultrasound school. So it's like I said, it's, it's so many things that you can do with it. One of you guys' most asked questions is ultrasound tech salary. Give me one second, y'all. Let me figure out what I did with my phone. Okay, I'm back, y'all. I'm sorry. I know I feel like my angle might have changed a little bit. But this is... I am not going to be telling my exact salary. I will say coming out of school, I was lucky enough to be in the range of a little over 60k so I would say it's a pretty good job as far as finances because that's just with me having no registries at the time that I was hired um, in most places you have to get you have to have your boards in a certain amount of time so for the place that I'm working now they're giving me I think it was oh gosh I don't want to say the wrong thing it's either six months or a year it has to be a year to get my abdominal board on top of my vascular. So the place that I'm working now, you have to have at least two to be employed. And physics does not count. So physics is the first board that you have to take before you can take any of your other board exams. That's like the gateway to the other ones. So keep in mind that this is going to highly vary based on your area. But for and also your boards. So every registry that you acquire, you typically get a raise for it depending on your facility. But the place that I work, you get a raise. So every time you get a new board exam, you get a raise. And this just is salary.com. 
this is in my area as of december 27 2022 the range typically falls between 75,000 and 91,000 a year so like out in this says the same thing it varies including education certification additional skills and number of skills and number of years you spent in your profession so be expecting to start off closer to the 60 70 range and then know that that number is going to greatly change as you get different board exams and also don't be afraid to go to a facility where like if you're not being paid within your means go ahead and go to a different facility it's you know yeah most challenging thing about being an ultrasound tech my most challenging thing will have to be just staying up with all the new practices that are constantly emerging so making sure that you are doing things up to par but then also incorporating new new tactics and new methods if you learned any so by that i mean for example the place that i'm working in now they just told us that we're going to start learning neurosonography so we're going to be scanning the brain i've never done anything like that i've never even seen like an actual scan besides on a baby head not an actual adult so i don't necessarily know how that's going to go and they are going to be giving us training for that so sometimes things like that can be really really scary when you're learning a new thing or a brand new procedure that you guys may be doing anything like that can be overwhelming but just just know that repetition y'all repetition i know that sounds so cliche but honestly repetition is your friend in sonography like if you're not doing it more than once you're probably not going to get it some people do but wasn't the case for me so just keep trying and you will get it like i am perfect example of this i am 29 years old and i have been at this for a very long time i took a break i did a different schooling pathway i got my esthetician license like some most of most stuff we'll do a different q a about like my personal life but yeah i just wanted to keep this with the ultrasound tech um genre let me just double check my list i think that is it for now yeah so thank you guys so very much for watching this video be sure to interact in the comments. If you guys have anything that I did not cover, be sure to drop it down below and I will answer all of you guys' questions, as many as I can. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for being here and I will see you guys in the next video.